because you visit all those porn yeah, sites. All right, yeah, ready to roll. You to Might be ready to roll, uh, kids. Yeah. Holy yeah. shit, we're starting almost on time. Almost. Okay, here we go. Holy shit. I'm scared. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Y'all are listening to the Overseas Connection podcast. Shut up and sit down. Here we go. Would you come? I think we're just getting started. Medic! I'm a witcher. I think this is more than you can handle. He sits on his ass all day. Let's do this. Hey, everybody. Thanks for tuning in to episode 506 of your Overseas Connection podcast. Uh, today is December 16th, 2018, and I am just one of your hosts today guiding you along this journey in life uh, we call our lovely podcast. Uh, on today's show, we have the lovely Phil Olson. <laughs> hello, hello, hello. I identify as he, him. <laughs> and you can find me on <laughs> Twitter and everything else at Filthy. Good evening. Good evening, Phil. Also on the podcast. It's going to be podcast, a good show tonight. It's no going to be a great show tonight. On the podcast, also spinning the decks, getting us out on time, and uh, crossing fingers without any and any hiccups, Mr. Robin Tate. Hey, hello. Good evening. And season's greetings. I identify as a small puddle of creosote. Uh, I am in Ballymena in Northern Ireland. That is not a Monty, obscure Monty Python <laughs> reference. <laughs> Mr. Creosote. Um, and uh, I'm here. I've got my feckin' whiskey in hand. Uh, it's um, Sunday evening. And all is well. And I'm calm. And until the chat or the recording... <laughs> Says differently, everything seems to be going okay, which is kind of cool. Don't say I, that. I know, no, I know, I know. Oh. It's, a, it's a kiss of death, isn't it? Um, we just much. jinxed ourselves. So here we are. It's December, almost Christmas time, and uh, we're podcasting. Brilliant! <laughs> Absolutely brilliant. And last but certainly not least, the devilishly handsome esque, <laughs> beautiful Kim Woods. <laughs> Hi, everybody. And car- carrying on with the booze theme, I have Bailey's. So we're all going to be fucking drunk by the time this thing is over. I can see this already. Mm. And, uh, I uh, sadly did. Oh. Oh. Oh, no. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I, well. I didn't get, nobody sent me the goddamn memo. <laughs> right? That's okay. Yeah. There was a memo, apparently. Uh, well, hey, uh, thank you for joining us, Kim. Uh, yes. Thank you to everybody listening, either live or via Memorex. We appreciate your time, uh, taking a little bit of time to, to listen in on our weekly podcast. That's right. It is a weekly podcast every Sunday, 9 p.m. in the U.K., 1 p.m. on the most important territory called the West Coast, 4 p.m. on the East Coast, 3 p.m. on someplace called Central Time Zone, which nobody really cares about. Uh-huh. And uh, you can catch us. Twitch.tv forward slash OC podcast, mixer.com forward slash OC podcast, and newly refreshed and redesigned youtube.com forward slash OC podcast. Uh, we're there every Sunday. God damn it. Uh, are you going out there again? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because people are sick. People are ill. And I I have to drive the engine here and, and, and do things, Judith. It's my, it's a, thing i do for robin. mankind which is better than ever robin yes <laughs> you're, you're 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 live yeah i know judith's not listening <laughs> oh, <shit. laughs> no change that then. <laughs> never mind oh, uh, <laughs> i i thought that was uh, see we can't see robin right now robin is hidden to us he's only viewable to the listeners so uh, I, I thought that was just a, a real life scenario of Robin was suddenly given uh, given Judith the business. But <laughs> I've met Judith and I have, I've met Robin in real life. I know how that interaction happens. This really wouldn't be true. Uh, Robin would never talk to her that way. No. Well, he might. Oh, well, once, he might. Once. But you would pay for it. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And we'd never hear from Robin again. For those yes. that are watching tonight um, – there's a little sign because I can get away with putting this sign up right now. So, um, yeah, enjoy. 
<laughs> it's lovely complimentary <laughs> sign to you, Greg. Oh, dear. <laughs> Oh, why do I feel like I should be calling you a twunt right now? Oh, a twunt. Twunt, 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 yes. twunt. Yes. Allow me just to pull up uh, Twitch on my phone. Uh, anyway, all right. Let's move forward. Let's move forward. Let's wish somebody very special in our lives a happy birthday. Hey, Charlie Bop, happy birthday to you. Uh, apparently, he turned 21 today. I This is news to me, but the wow. kid just aged. Totally oh, fast. Dear, dear, dear. Charlie, 13 yes. years old. Yes. Um, as I said on Facebook today, we don't have to worry about him acting like a teenager now because he's been acting like one for about a year. Um, yeah, yeah. Charlie's 13. Um, and uh, he is a nerd. And uh, his Christmas, or his Christmas, his birthday gift has, was a new desk for his setup. So he wanted a new big desk. And um, All right. he's got his uh, multiple screen. He d- he doesn't know it yet, but he's getting the third screen for Christmas. So he'll have the third <gasps> screen. So he'll have his like daddy oh, set up and Joshua set up. So yeah, yeah. So and we he wanted to go karting. So we went karting last night. Um there was seven of us. Um a couple of his friends and a couple of us and Joshua. And the old man still has got it. In fact, I have been going to this karting place for years. Since it opened 10, 12 years ago, and we go four or five times a year. And they have this board, the top times of all time. Yeah? And you get your name up on it. If you break in, there's about 10, top 10. I am now in the top 10 of all time. I've been trying for so long to get onto that list. And I'm on it now. Fame. I've got a photograph if you want to see it. Anyway. I question I question the legitimacy of this carting place. Uh, one, knowing where you live, it likely there's like ten people that go to this place. No, 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 it's busy. No, no, no. There was there was there was fifty set had been fifty sessions before our session on Saturday alone. So. What? Yeah, forty of them are yours? <laughs> anyway, anyway let, let me have this. Let me have it. Judith wasn't impressed either. She wasn't impressed at all. Um you know, it's funny. I mean a few months ago, Joshua, we went to one of the races and he beat me. He beat my time. And I thought, ah, oh, that's right. it. That's it. You know, Joshua's now, he's taking over his Isle Man. That's it. And and I'm now, you know, going backwards and starting to go slower. And But I've I've, I've doubled down. I've got it. So anyway, nice. so, so uh, today. Hey, no, no, no. Let's, let's talk about karting real quick because yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to go back to uh, just, to, this is bring back some memories now. Hmm. Um, man, karting, if you haven't gone karting, I, I highly encourage it. It is, it is a blast. Mm-hmm. It is um, hard on the arms. It is an adrenaline rush mm-hmm. uh, because I mean, let's face it, you don't get to even in these little carts uh, because they're open wheel, they're open air. You feel the speed so much more so than you do, you know, even in your day to day drive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I will say this though: wrecks in carts Ouch. are actually pretty damn jolting. I I was a little caught off guard at how much that it, so. I, I was going into a corner. It was an S corner. I, I had to. Um, I was, you know, kind of feeling it. It was it was going through, and I lost traction, spun out. The the cart behind me just broadsided me, Ooh. and I can just say right now, I walked away from that being like, okay, yeah, I'm gonna feel that in the morning. My back got Ouch, nice yeah, and tweaked. Yeah, too right. I get it on my muscles, especially my right arm, because this is all mostly right turns. Um, now this is an indoor track, and it's very very short. I mean, a lap. I mean, my time last night was 16.62 seconds for a lap. It's extreme. A, it's ex- multiple, two levels. It's up a, a level. It's very, very quick, very, very tight. Um, so when you, you do, we went for, we go for four or five minute sessions and you're exhausted after pretty much those four, you know, the third. Yeah. Right. So it's very, very quick, very, very fast. And it had to be very, very smooth and, 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 precise i mean literally when i say it's my fastest time ever my time before this was uh just outside the 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 top the slowest time on this list is 16.8 my fastest time before yesterday was 16.9 seconds so i've literally taken less than two tenths of it so uh yeah that's how precise it is anyway good fun good i love carding love it's good fun good fun with a a good crowd so yes absolutely Uh, and then so today he chose lunch and today he wait went, wait oh so yes we're still on Charlie's birthday yeah, yeah sorry. sorry he wanted to have have Indian <laughs> Indian for his for birthday lunch, Indian lunch. 
for lunch. So we were having gelfrizi <laughs> and, and tikka masala and naans and pilu rice and badgies for lunch on a Sunday. It what happened to the chiros chicken? So I'm I'm quite, what quite sure, to pizza. I'm quite sure I'm garliced up right now and, and um, yeah, it was tasty but very strange on a Sunday. He's a he's a closet he's a closet brummy. We have curry every, we have curry for breakfast. Well, you do you do Birmingham is probably the curry capital of the UK. You know, you are into your baldies in a big way. I can't oh, even yeah. think of the last time I had something with curry in it. I mean it's been a while. Yeah? I love a good curry. Yeah. About yeah. three days ago for me. <laughs> live curry. Mmm. Yeah. Sarah Sarah wants live. to go for some vegetable samosas. And yeah. Phil, Phil's not sure. He just has to check and see if there's any vegetables were harmed in making them. If the vegetables what died the on their own natural, samosa? if they died on their own natural natural causes, you know. So. No, I, I mean I've heard of mimosas. Of vegetables. I, I've heard of mimosas, which I'm all down for a mimosa, but I've never heard of a samosa. And it certainly a doesn't samosa, sound like a mimosa. A samosa is like a phyllo pastry triangle parcel with. Um, Usually lamb or chicken in, but you can have vegetable ones as well. Very nice. Mm-hmm. I'm going to take my mimosa over the samosa. Just yeah. saying. No, samosas for the win. Mimosa so, yes. for the win. So he's 13, and that's it. <laughs> We've done that. All so right. happy birthday, Charlie. Happy birthday, my little play, man. Play, play him a jingle. Oh, shit. Okay. <laughs> happy birthday to you. It's not that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's dive into some story time. Oh, that one. Everyone here loves story time, our favorite time of the day. There you go. Thank you for that, Rob. Mm. You've been Johnny on the spot with the sound, uh, the sound clips. Perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no delays at all. Mm-hmm. Hey, I want to talk story time. I'm going to mm. take up all of the story time. Okay. Because uh, uh, it, it actually involves a certain individual outside of me on this podcast right now. Uh, so uh, my Chargers played Kim's Kansas City Chiefs <laughs> on Thursday night. Big football game. Uh, got lots of attention on the national spotlight. Mostly, though, all directed at the Chiefs and how great they were and how Patrick Mahomes is the second coming of Christ. And uh, it was it was all this goodness towards the Chiefs. And they're like, well, maybe the Chargers might be able to compete, but probably not. This, the Chiefs are just too much. They're too much. Well, you know what happened? My Chargers came in and put the beat down. Well, they didn't put a beat down. It was actually a really no, close game. Really came was. all the way down. Honestly, the Chiefs were leading by 14 points with like four and a half minutes left. That I mean, it ridiculous. was done. It was done. And somehow, some way, my Chargers came through, scored a touchdown with basically three minutes, three and a half minutes left, kicked the ball back to the Chiefs, absolutely stuffed oh, the Chiefs without sacked. letting them... Oh. Didn't, didn't let the Chiefs go anywhere. The Chiefs kicked the ball back to my Chargers, and the Chargers drove the field with four seconds left. They not only got the, 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 the basically the touchdown that would have tied the game, but they decided instead of kicking just the one extra point, they go for two points for the win, which if they don't convert that two-point conversion, they lose the game. It's over. So it was either win or go home, and they won, and I was just like, dumbfoundedly shocked at at the end of that game. I could not believe they pulled it out. It was a great win, and Jeez. I am... It was 20, 20 at the 21 on the fourth quarter. Whoa, yep, yeah, this, they had a uh, one? Got it right there. Kim, I'm just, we're just watching the highlights now. Wow! <laughs> Very good. Yeah, it well was, done. Enjoy it the glory. Fantastic. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Absolutely glory until next week when uh, they lose or something. You know. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. I At least you. for the night, I got to send Kim all kinds of uh, messages on Twitter and uh, our WhatsApp <laughs> groups. And um, yeah. Also, Gary DeFelice's Broncos lost to the Browns. That is like insult to right. injury. Oh, that's there. terrible. Yes. That really is oh, awful, isn't them. it? Isn't that awful? To the Browns. Poor oh, shame. Oh, shame. <laughs> Phil is just like, I have no idea what they're talking about, but I would just play. No, along. I do. I do. <laughs> Tighten up. Oh, that's right. You're a Titans fan. That's true. Yeah, you lost to me as well. <laughs> again, again. Well, last I, I have just. I haven't looked. At, I haven't looked at what the Cardinals did, but I'm sure they lost. 
They played today, actually, and yeah, I think they lost like twenty to seven. It was oh, not pretty. Oh dear, mm. I didn't. Think Ouch. Oh uh, well. Ah uh, well. Next year. Next year. Next year for you, Robin. Yeah, it's a building year. It's a building year. So bringing these new new go. team members along, and you know we'll we'll get there again. We'll be at the top again. Have you ever seen our stadium? Holy crap! It's the best stadium in the world. It's, it's an awesome stadium. Mm-hmm. It is an awesome stadium. I would love Buccaneers to go to the games. Actually, I'm sorry. I love the Buccaneers stadium. I love the Buccaneers stadium with the uh, with the yeah. private ship. Well, that's just like Disneyland. That's that's just straight up yeah. Disneyland. Yeah. Mm. Uh, well, all congratulations. Right. En- I'm enough, sorry, Kim. Enough of the football. Yes. It's all right. Wait, hold on. One, wait, wait, one moment. Kim? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Suck it! <laughs> now we can move on. Now we can move on. Uh, dear, dear, dear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Live it up. <laughs> uh, all right, Kim, let's talk about what you've been doing uh, outside of watching your team lose. Uh, looks like they, you have some They've lost three going. games the whole entire year. You know what? That ain't bad for the Chiefs because we've all no. been there when they were way fucking worse. So yes. I'm going no, no, no. to we're, we're all enjoying it. Well, you and I are enjoying a, a very good NFL mm-hmm. season. Exactly. Uh, so, anyway, right. you know, enough of that. Uh, Tony had his first big school Christmas program Thursday. And it was it was nice. I mean, it was long, even though they only did like four grades, but it was it was still long. He did well. Hold he on, was a little hold on. Hold on. Mm-hmm. I, when we're talking Christmas program, oh. was he singing? Was he what, what was his role within the he Christmas was program? The little ones okay. just did singing, so I okay. got some video of it, but I like I said, I still haven't went through it yet to see if it's actually any good. But um, yeah, he did well. He was cute, and you know, he had to fight the urge of standing there on the little. Um, podium thing he kept trying to wave at us <laughs> it was hilarious <laughs> little fart um so we did that and um yesterday i managed to decorate our christmas tree finally Ooh. after having it out of the box for like a week and the cats have not knocked it down yet so that's a win seriously <laughs> yeah have the cats knocked the tree down previously well yeah they, they knocked it down once before but since i've got okay. it decorated they've left it alone so fingers crossed Right. That, yeah, that's well, also why I waited so long we, to put we, it back up. So. I just go to YouTube there and cats and Christmas trees, and I'm playing some video of now and cats and Christmas trees. Yeah. <laughs> yep. There seems to be hundreds and hundreds of them. So yep. they seem that cats seem to have a thing about them, you know? Oh, yeah, they do. They, it, it, it's ridiculous. They're assholes. So. Well, <laughs> my, my cat my cat really doesn't care about our tree at wow. all. It just ignores it. Wish mine no, we, we used to have the biggest problem with our cats in the Christmas tree because we used to use the tinsel, the actual uh, mm-hmm. little foil yep. tinsel. Uh, subsequently, apparently, they've outlawed that because who yep. knew it was a choking hazard. Yep. Uh, <laughs> but um, our cats would – they would eat that crap and choke on it. And then we would get you know, cat yeah. puke sitting behind the sofa – and it would it would have tinsel wrapped up in it, which is always lovely. <laughs> yeah. Um, but That's that so was cute. what drove the cats nuts, and they would attack the tree because of the tinsel. I read a story yeah. about um, one of the supermarkets here in the UK fell banning glitter now from a lot of their products, the Christmas glitter, because it's minute plastic, which gets into the oceans, which kills like the dudes and the turtles and stuff and fish. The, oh. the dudes. Yeah, yeah. It kills the dudes the, the, and the dude, turtles. The turtles and the, and the, the and the, and the I hate it when it kills the dudes. Dudes, yeah. The dude abides, you know, that doesn't like I actually tinsel. probably wouldn't mind it if it actually killed the dudes. <laughs> so, okay. So, uh, Christmas tree quantities. We have four. Three in, one out. So, I mean, it's, it's crazy. I just have one, yeah. Oh, okay. All you need is one. Keep, keeping up with the tights again. Here okay, we go. so uh, the Christmas trees that are there, uh, there is now, today, one present has appeared under our tree. Today. Oh. Mm. Wow. Did you and or a elf plant that tree, or is or, sorry, that, that present, or is this coming from somebody unknown to See, you? See, some people would say the difference between me and elf would be hard to work out. So yes, I would agree with let's that. Let's say that that Robin Elf put a little present for Judith underneath the tree today, but just as nice Aww. in a wee bag, wee pudding bag. So that's nice Christmas huh? pudding bag. And she's seen <clears> it. <throat> this is so. Really, what what's happened here is you're torturing Judith. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> she says, right. "Well, uh, Judith, what am I? We're doing the Christmas list, you know, ticking off." 
you know what uh, what's Corey getting what's Taylor getting what's Joshua getting what's Charlie getting what's Glenn getting what's What's the other ones called? Oh yeah, Jasmine. What's Jasmine getting <laughs> numbers, Robin? You <laughs> need numbers. Um, <laughs> yeah, and, right. and I say, oh, and I'm going, okay. And what's Judith? Oh, and say, well, what about Robin? Oh, Robin got a car. So yeah, looks like I'm, I have to play down my Christmas. I'm, I'm not getting anything. You did get a car. I mean, I, yeah, yeah. It's I, kind I, of a cool Christmas. I, well, 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 I went through MOT this week, Phil. Very happy. And now I've got my personalised registration oh, plate. Good. I've got the documents for it and. I just have to order the plates to get it on now. So, woo-hoo. so I'm getting that. Now, what does the uh, what does the plate say? Uh, it'll say RT. Oh, R- R- it say RT at the t- yeah, pretty much RT at the top. Twins. It's for my Never. for my initials, and underneath it, it will be <laughs> RT at the top. O two for the two boys, and then JLT for Judith's initials. So RT over O two JLT. RT, O2, JLT. Oh, that's right. You guys do the numbers, like you have multiple levels of numbers. No, on the back of the Jeep, it's a square plate. So it'll ha- I'll be able to put two levels at the front. It'll just be a line. But at the back, it'll be RT above and O2, JLT. This and makes back. no sense to me. I know. You'll see the photographs eventually. So that doesn't matter. Yes, <laughs> I, I will need the photographs because it, it will, in the US, all of our license plates are the same, basically. It is, you have one row. Yeah, yeah. So that's, uh, and most of them to, here. It's up to seven characters. But most of them, like on the back of some Jeeps, they have square plates. So it's uh, some of them. So anyway. You'll see huh? You'll see, You'll see. see photos of it, Greg. You know, sort I'm sure of I OJ, will. OJ Simpson style. Oh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> right. yeah. And the gloves and everything. I've got the gloves. Mm-hmm. I would actually be down for that because then I could like go on talk to be like I knew the man. Yeah, let me tell you, you I, nobody ever saw this coming. Did damn it. Uh, anyway, actually, no, we all saw it coming. Robin was was <laughs> bound to go crazy any day now. Uh, <laughs> Bill, yes. What have you been up to? Have, I've been in Cardiff this week, which is the capital of Wales. Oh, that's my, where uh, Doctor Who is. My dear that, homeland. And, and um, went there for the weekend with Lisa and my parents. Do a bit of shopping. Went to saw Aquaman, which was Ooh, uh, nice. superb. Ooh. Really enjoyed it. Let's talk about yeah. that. I was very pleasantly surprised. Uh, really good fun. And um, what's his name? Jason um, Momoa. Momoa. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's absolutely superb. Is it not He's Bobby? kind of perfect for that role. Is it not Bobby Ewing? He no. is. Say it is. again. Bobby Ewing? Is it not him that does Aquaman? That's Patrick, no. Patrick Duffy. Oh, Patrick Duffy. Bobby no. Ewing? Yeah. Yeah. No. 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 That's no, like that's no. That was the Atlantis. man from Atlantis. Yeah. Is it not the no, same the guy, thing? The, no. No. The guy playing Aquaman right now, though, is the same guy from Game of Thrones. Mm-hmm. Yes. Well, uh, Aquaman what is in played. Game of Thrones. I didn't miss. I missed that character. <laughs> yes. You did. Totally did. Oh. By the way, uh, outside of Aquaman, uh, can we talk about the most important thing to talk about? Actually. No. I hold on. We're not finished with Aquaman. Hold on. No. 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 Is he a Marvel character? Oh, for fuck's sake. No, he's no DC. 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 All right, okay. Thank no, you. This, this is actually a good Excuse DC me. movie. I haven't oh. seen, actually, I haven't seen Wonder Woman, so that's See, probably I, very good. Part of me thinks Robin's... Good. Yeah, part of me thinks Robin's taking the piss out of us, but then there's a small part of me that's starting, starting to realize maybe Robin really doesn't know who Aquaman is. Mm-hmm. I don't know who Aquaman is. It sounds like a breath freshener. Oh, Aquaman. <laughs> Aquaman. For the, for breath the freshener. Well. <laughs> Aquaman, for the longest time, was the absolute worst worst superhero in yes. uh, well outside of the stupid wonder twins because they were the dumb ones that mm. the cartoon created <laughs> uh but of the justice league superheroes aquaman was just like the shittiest one because he could talk the fucking fish and that was about it Seriously, and everybody thought greg you have honestly, to remember in the uk when phil and i were growing up sorry phil to date you a bit um we didn't get much we got the old um, spider-man cartoons um but we didn't. We got get, mainly Marvel. Yeah, we didn't get a lot of stuff. We didn't have a thousand channels when when Phil and I were kids. We had three channels. <laughs> okay, yeah. now okay. you're just bringing up another quick, quick I memory. I only had three channels, and I knew who the hell Aquaman was. Yeah. So yeah, I sort literally. Of, but, eh. <laughs> yeah, no, no. So speaking of the the limited channels you guys had growing hmm. up, I just got done watching European Vacation. Where they're sitting in the hotel in the UK <laughs> and watching cheese channels, just cheese, cheese. And more cheese, and more cheese. Uh, That's still the case now. Yeah, <laughs> that that that. By the way, that portrait of the UK uh, did you guys no favors. Hey, look, you know, look, Greg. I remember <laughs> when true. Channel Four came on. It came on at yeah. four o'clock. Five was it? 
four o'clock in the afternoon and everybody gathered around the TV to see this new channel switch on and a quiz game that is still going to this day called Countdown was the first ever programme on it. It was okay. sensational. They had an advert for sanitary towels, the first ever one in the UK. It was amazing. Channel 4. I remember going to bed when the little... When the Queen, the God Save the Queen came on and, and the yeah, screen went, yeah, down to the, te- the sexy test card. I mean, that was it. Yeah, and the only the only thing on in the morning until about eight o'clock was Open University, educational oh, programs. Oh, yeah, flat me. And then when we got, then when we got sort of uh, satellite TV, it sort of went off and it was crappy stuff unless you paid for it all. So we watched German porn channels before, until it got scrambled. So you've seen like <laughs> yeah. RTL for 30 seconds and then it scrambled and then you tuned it in a wee bit because you had to tune the old satellite things in. <laughs> oh, yeah. Phil, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We, we, we had that for the longest time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> German oh, porn dear. folks. You used to squint, you used to squint at Get the squiggles. Get that squiggly line and be cut everything off. Yeah. <laughs> you see if you can tune it in. <laughs> yep, that was it. We're old. Yep, yep that's it. And I'm the pervert in the bunch. Go figure. <laughs> no, definitely. Uh, no, no, sorry. No. Uh, all right, but so what I was trying anyway. to say, uh, yeah. outside of Aquaman, Phil, I'm glad that you got to see that. And, it's, and even even more happy to hear that it actually was a good movie because um, mm-hmm. let's face it, DC comic book hero movies haven't been stellar for a while. Um, yeah. I think, I think the big, the big difference is that with the Batman, and the Superman films, they're very down and um, almost, yeah, they're, they're depressing. This one has taken a sort of almost Marvel look mm-hmm. and okay. said, sod it. Let's just go tongue in cheek. Let's go cheesy. You know, have a, have a laugh and uh, make it just as wild as possible. So, no, it's good. Yeah, and, and you know what? I apologize. I, I should just take a step back. Wonder Woman actually is a very good superhero movie as well. Uh, and I think what makes Wonder Woman and probably Aquaman even better um, than all of the Batmans and the Supermans we've been seeing in the recent history is that we, we don't know their stories that well. So it's it's we're learning a new character, whereas... Good God, I don't need to see another Batman reboot. Please, please, please do not do that ever again. I don't need another Superman reboot. Um, so, uh, yeah, uh, I, I, I like the fact that they're opening up the, 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 the book and saying, hey, let's pick some different superheroes to portray. And speaking of different superheroes to portray, while, yes, it's been done to death in a lot of different ways, I am stoked for Godzilla, King of Monsters. Yes. Yep. Holy crap, yep. Yep. that looks amazing. Uh, and if you have not seen the latest trailer, by all means, go to YouTube, Robin. Go I've, to YouTube. I have Look a it up. guilty pleasure with a Godzilla movies. And I... Yes. There's certain movies, films, that I put on lots and lots. I will sometimes stick one in my ear going to bed and listen to it and probably fall asleep within five minutes. But Matthew Broderick and that Godzilla movie, I know it has so many holes and it's so slow and dire and terrible. It's a guilty pleasure of mine. So No, no, I, I'm with you. I'm the with one, you. The one I, with I, the, I, the last one there with, with Breaking Bad Guy was such a disappointment. Mm-hmm. No, to me, that so was good. good. It, was, See, it could I have been better. that one. Mm. Could have been better. I wanted more. Uh, I, I think there's, there's always room. I, the Godzilla that they killed Godzilla and, and Matthew Broderick, that, that Godzilla movie, I was okay with uh it it's a good movie for certain aspects of it mm. um but it it wasn't it wasn't in uh in tune with godzilla um mm. for for lack of a better way to put it and so i i love the reboot that they've done because they're kind of taking basically the old godzilla movies and they're modernizing them and they're 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 taking the really bad cheesy 60s, 70s, I think it was 60s, 70s when they made them. I could be wrong. Uh, Godzilla movies, and they're they're it putting was, this really yeah. good polish. Um, I remember watching Godzilla, Godzilla King of Monsters, uh, the old version, mm. and half those dinosaurs, or dinosaurs, half those monsters I was looking at, uh, you know, like um, Mothra. I hated Mothra. Fucking <laughs> one of the dumbest monsters ever. You know, the stupid worm phase, and then it blossomed into the moth, and I was just like, just fry that thing. But 
in in the new version, the Mothra looks pretty awesome. Uh, yeah. I'm 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 really really stoked for this. Uh, I cannot wait, and uh, I think anybody who loves Godzilla would be excited for this. Robin, I think you are going to uh, find that this is going to exceed all your expectations. Oh, okay. Is Godzuki in it? I hope so. I <laughs> hope Godzuki's in it. Godzuki. <laughs> Although, let's face it, the dumb ring of smoke that he would puff out. Uh, one, I think it was like a tribute to like the 1960s pot movement. I could be wrong, but you know, it was just like he, just this big wafting ring yeah. of smoke coming out of it. And it was supposed to be, I guess, his radiation powers, but uh, it just looked like he was smoking a doobie and blown out rings of smoke. Um, Goodness, is, it, is it like every movie now you go, oh, he was in Game of Thrones? Because I see... Um, Littlefinger. Old Lannister is in this new Godzilla movie. I see Littlefinger everywhere. I don't even know what the guy's name is, but I see him everywhere. Just Littlefinger. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's cool. That looks good. Going Taylor to break. Break. Okay, fair enough. Good stuff. All Excellent. Right. Excellent. Uh, I think we can move on to some games. Well, oh well, I have been buying lots of original vinyl, vinyl again. We know this, Robin. We know this. We've talked about <sighs> this. You have an addiction I know, but it's problem. brilliant. It's lovely. The vinyl's class. I mean, I'm sitting reading a book today, listening to uh, 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 Fleetwood Mac, Rumours again, and I bought War of the Worlds again, and I bought, uh, uh, what do you call her, that killed herself drugs, dumped them from England. That, Amy Winehouse, Amy Winehouse, so Back to Black, which is fantastic. And funny John- thing about mm. vinyl, mm. it's actually not good audio quality, but no, but no, it's it's the warmth. the sound of yeah, it, the crackle, the sound of it, 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 it. I think it it pulls at your you know your your memories, Little your finger, nostalgia yeah. factor immensely. Um, and there is something kind of warm about it, for lack of a better word, but warm. It just it's and there's something like, lovely about listening to a whole album rather than an individual yeah, song. Yeah, and it's, it's the tactile feel as well. It's the fact of picking up an album and actually right. having it in your hands and looking at the notes, reading the notes and the you know the artwork and everything else. It's something that certainly you lost with uh, oh, CDs wow. and you definitely lost with downloads. Because, you know, that, that War of the Worlds, the big, there was a big, big, brochure like a magazine inside it with loads of artwork in it yeah. and and i remember studying that as a kid every minute detail like the bit where their their artillery guy was going to build this the tunnels under the ground and there's this, this imagine his dream of it was a double page spread of the city under the ground with the little cricket field and everything and i it was just like a uh, ersha or uh, uh, ersha or what do you call him the artist uh, archer Frig. Him. Usher. 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 Yeah, yeah, Usher. Yeah. yeah. Usher. It looks like a, like a painting like that, and, and just but just going through that and the detail and it's just something lovely about it. Lovely. But it's like everything coming back round again. So when you're talking about mm-hmm. Batman and stuff like got there, don't need a reboot. So when everything comes back into fashion, like the vinyl and those bits and pieces, yeah. Do you think that the original Batman from the sixties? And early seventies may come back into style again <laughs> in thirty years' no. time. It'll come back round. No. In the it, ne- style. it never went out of style. Yeah, <laughs> you mean the bat dance? <laughs> okay, the, okay, the bat dance. Yes. Okay, the, I'll give you the bat dance, Phil. I'll uh, give you the, but, okay, okay. But the 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 out of shape uh, Adam West <laughs> running around in basically oversized underoos. I don't need to see that ever <laughs> again. <laughs> Okay. Uh, no, not outside of this podcast. Anymore. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Uh, I was just going to say. Oh, you know the one sound, Robin, that mm-hmm. will really bring back the memories is the first time you scratch one of your records. Oh, oh yeah. God. Yeah. yeah. Th- that's a sound. That is a sound that just. I mean, you cringe at it, and you instantly are like checking the vinyl. You're looking to make sure you didn't make a scratch mark. It's not. It's not cheap. Let me tell you. No, and and they're all these big thick. It's thick vinyl records now. Like, was it five hundred milligrams or whatever? Whatever they call it now. Or, um, it's like double the thickness of why I remember them. Um, but I mean that that War of the Worlds album was like twenty five quid. So yeah, but they're getting me again all these years later. Anyway, um, okay. So we shall do this. Today I feel like playing computer games. 
I feel like playing computer games. All right. So we're going to talk about some games. I know we've already rattled off through the monthly freebies before. Uh, probably worth noting uh, a few of the freebies that are going to be going away or have already gone away. Uh, and that's probably the better way to put it. So, Kim, why don't we uh, just just on the ones that are disappearing and who are reappearing. And it really, this just applies to Xbox because uh, uh, PlayStation, they're going to be all there for the whole month. Mm -hmm. Same with the, the Twitch Prime games. But there are two or three, I think, that are... are disappearing and then new ones reappearing so why don't we go through those real fast all righty for the xbox one still around is cube 2 you'll have that till the end of the month uh never alone is officially gone it was uh last day was yesterday i don't know you might be able to actually pick it up today because i have noticed that you know actually you still... never never alone is officially here Oh, here. Yes, sorry. My, my bad. Uh, Race the Sun is the one that is gone, but actually you may still be able to pick it up because I've noticed sometimes a day or two, even after they're supposed to be gone, you, you might still be able to download them. Uh, for the 360, which is also backwards compatible, Dragon Age 2 is gone. But like I said, you might still be able to pick it up. And then Mercenaries Playground of Destruction is available now to the end of the month. So, there you have it. All right. There you go. Get them if you want them. That's right. All right, let's talk about some games that we've been playing. Uh, let's start with Robin. Okay, cool. Oh, good. Well, um, I've been having a bit of a an, an art house sort of um, week. It's been a bit um, a bit odd, um, and there's been some really really cool stuff. Play there you go. And I'm just going to transition to that. Okay, I'm not going to talk. So yeah. Um, so uh, there's this sort of kind of thing about not wanting to spend any money on more games because I've got Red Dead Redemption and so many other big things sitting there that I haven't played. But some of those mm -hmm. tempting things in Game Pass and and uh, other places that are free-ish uh, have got me. So the first thing I played was a game called Fee, which I was quite excited for about a year ago uh, when it was announced mm -hmm. in all of the, um, uh, the shows. And Fee is... Art house, okay. So it's journey. It is a platformer. It is weird and wonderful. It reminds me a lot of of Ori, just without all of the color. Yeah, but it's nothing like Ori, where Ori is precise, precise jumping. Um, okay. Yeah, where this is more sort of open worldy. There is no general mm -hmm. handhold. There's no instructions hardly whatsoever with it, and there's it doesn't really tell you where to go. Um. It is right. quite lovely in its own way. Uh, there are some really nice little features where you commune. Phil will love this. You commune with animals. You don't kill them. And you sort of sing to the animals and they sing back and you become friends. And they give you some extra powers or skills so you can ride on the back of one with its permission, Phil. Doing no harm. <laughs> Um, and there'll be other little raccoons you get them all to sing together and bits and pieces and then there's these big unknown baddies that walk around which will try and come at you and kill you and they must be attacking something in the forest it is quite odd when, when, when you sing to them you sort of you sort of shriek a bit you sort of you tune it in as if you're tuning in a, a stereo or, you know, or an old wireless radio so you have to tune into their their song and you're just going what the hell are you playing there it sounds like something squealing and it kind of was um, but yeah, I don't know if it's too art house for me. Uh, are you are you struggling with it? Well, I, I played it for a, about an hour or so and got a few things, but there is a distinct lack of direction. I do like to like yeah. my platformers more and more and more. I'm sort of recognizing that smaller game, so I will go back to this. Um, uh, but uh, then I spotted. Well, before oh, sorry, you go fee, into this, sorry, fee, fee, fee. Okay, so yeah. so it, it's free with um something. What was it free with? Mm. It was in the EA uh, store. EA, EA store. EA vault. Yeah, the vault. The vault. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And 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 should be noted, uh, Sarah uh, RCGC was pointing out that there are PlayStation Plus sales going on right now. I think Xbox also has sales going on. Uh, so the there's, it, I'm sure Steam has sales going on for the holidays. So I know we really didn't cover any of that, but. Absolutely, there are deals to be had right mm -hmm. now if you're looking to pick up some games on the cheap, mm -hmm. heading into Christmas. Um, all of the big manufacturers, I'm sure Nintendo are doing the same thing. Uh, they have opportunities for you to buy games to go along with the consoles that they're hoping you're buying right now. 
Uh, it's weird. All right, there, let's... There's all these services, and this is the way things are going. There's almost no yeah. need to buy new games. Unless yeah. they're big titles yeah. now. Because there's just so many... Even if you're, oh, I want something new, just go into Game Pass or go into some of these other yeah. things. and There's such such good stuff there. So, it's odd. Yeah. Odd. So, that's that. Uh, well, let's let's transition and talk about the other game you've been playing, Robin. Yeah, because you've been uh, playing as well, yeah? Yep. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, Below. Below. So, Below has been in a development hell for a long, long time. It was originally announced at E3 2013, I believe. Yeah, it was with the announcement of the Xbox One. Yeah. It's been, it was it was out there from the get-go, and it has been just, like, you know, in behind the scenes. I know Cappy Games, the, mm. the people that made the game, they actually have made and, and actually um, distributed, I think, two additional games already since below came oh. forward so i mean they they you know this game i think for a long time people thought was never going to see the light of day yeah um, okay so what is it it's a it's a a top down sort of two-ish dish sort of top down adventure game with rogue like things or parts to it so it, no it is it is 100 percent a rogue like this is a right? yeah uh mm-hmm. you die in this game it is permanent death um, I found that out just before we got on this podcast. I, I hadn't died <laughs> the yet. First time, yeah. Um, what? Spiky yeah, thing? Yeah, you, you die. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Look at Spiky thing. I, I'm like, what is this? I'm all, is it? And then it, it like, killed me. Um, and then the game resets and it says another traveler has reached the island. And then you take over a new character. So I'm assuming. And Robin, maybe you've already experienced this, but you'll be able to find your body somewhere in the yeah. caves if so, you can find it. So again, staff. there is no hand holding here whatsoever. Yes. No hand holding. Okay. So no, no. instructions. You get there. Um, there is a menu which you work out. So you have to eat. You have to drink. You right. Have to, so because your health will go down, um, and it'll 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 it's very the audio and it is lovely. And it'll give you audio cues. I think some of the audio cues are when you're in new areas and you're progressing the correct way. Um, the first thing, did you get the lamp yet? Yes. Okay, so I that's got the lamp. So the, so the lamp is very key. I've lost my lamp at the moment. Um, so oh. I, I died. So the first time I died, I was just right. to, to describe. You are a little warrior in this, and the character is tiny, titchy, tiny, titchy, titchy, titchy. Yeah, um, right. but it's still very, very pretty. But just for effect and the scope and the size of the thing, and a lot of the and the game itself is very very dark. It's very. It reminds me. Sorry, we'll take a, a quick. So, in, in terms of people trying to understand the visuals, obviously we Dab- have it up on Dab- screen. But for those that are listening, it reminds me actually of how it's like a very polished looking old school Zelda. Mm. Mm-hmm. In that you're you're looking almost directly down it it has a slight angle to it but you're you're really over the top looking down on your character traversing along you know this this land um and there is dimension to it yeah um and and there's the graphical touches in this game are pretty amazing like the grass as you walk oh, through the beautiful. grass parts ways and then it it folds back again as you go behind it hmm. if you take your sword and you swipe along the grass it'll actually cut the grass yep and and leaves the grass cut so all of these little mechanics um just so nice little touches you can chop up a little fox you can chop it to death and turn him into a steak <laughs> oh phil cybrice <laughs> yes <laughs> well <laughs> phil in the, fairness, you can also find turnips and yes, eat vegetarian. You can, actually, yes. But you have to pull the turnips. Um, you do have to pull the turnips. So, okay, so early in the game, you find the lamp. I go down, and there's you go down into, the, into the caverns. A lot of it's, it, the whole thing is very dark. So, and you pick up, when you kill a creature, you pick up a little crystal. You can drop the crystals on the ground, and that, that also sort of lights them up as well. It sort of gives you light in the area. You have torches, which burn down. And you How have do to, you drop the crystals? Uh, D on down, on down in the D-pad, you drop a crystal. Okay. And it glows while you're there. It stays lit as a lamp. Uh, and then you have okay. torches which burn out, and you have to craft new torches. Right. I haven't, and there's lots of crafting, but I haven't quite. There's a you. So you throw things. There's three slots, and if you can make, make something, right. it, you can make it. And if not, you can't. So, so but water, 
a turnip or two turnips and water, I made soup. Oh, there you go. I haven't turnip done soup. that yet. I've just been eating raw. Yeah. Okay, I'm, I'm no processed food for me. Um, uh, <laughs> so, but when you get your lamp, you can you can also fire the lamp not just in a sort of general surround. You can fire it in a beam by pressing the left bumper, and I think the lamp will also highlight different murals and stuff like that, which unlocks doors and you does can, stuff like that. Yeah. You could use it to, uh, when you first find the lamp, in fact, I, I think it will actually open up a cave door uh, that you can go through. So and um, so I, I'll be playing it, Greg, and going, okay, I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't get I, it. I'll just do the I, same thing. I, I don't get it, but I like it. <laughs> I, I don't know yep. what it is, but I'm kind of got it. And I'm at a real point now where I'm frustrated because I don't know what to do. I've lost my lamp. And right. I, need, I need to find my lamp again. And the map is a little bit confusing to me. I haven't got my head quite around the map yet because yep. it, it sort of shows you the directions to go and there's a red dot flashing where my body is, the person that I was before. But I've been back there and I can't find my lamp. So I'm, I'm, mm. I'm wandering around loosely at the moment. And then again, because it's not infinite food, I've died right. a few times because I have run out of resources. And because I, uh -oh. I wanted to move on to different areas, so yes, it is. Uh, will it? I mean, now I've already un unlocked something like three or four hundred achievements with it, just right. by finding the lamp, doing the first thing, going and getting my finding my lamp, and and with the second character. Um, I think I unlocked a hundred gamers. Yeah, yeah, when, yes. when I uh, died. Yeah. So that would kind of tell me that the game doesn't isn't very very long. Because it was it a thousand gamer feels score, like it could be, but it feels like it could be. So yeah, I don't know. It is beautiful. <laughs> it is different, <laughs> um, and uh, it has me enthralled. So yeah, I, I typically don't get on with games like this. I really don't. Hmm. Um, I, I I do not like Dark Souls, which is a game that doesn't hold your hand. It's permadeath. Um, yeah. And, and I would say this, I think Dark Souls actually holds your hand a little bit more than this game does. This game, literally, you just land on the island and it's like, Go. okay. And nothing nothing in terms of the tutorial stuff or, or the, the prompts, they're very subtle or very basic. You know, It'll tell you to hit a button by yeah. flashing up on the screen yeah. like left bumper. And that was basically just to show you that you could direct the lamp. But... Um, nothing tells you how to craft other than, you know, you kind of stumble your way into it. You, you, you get to a fire and that opens up the crafting menu. Um, and apparently when you collect enough of those stupid little shard things, that opens up the menu that you can basically transform your fire into a oh. forge oh, okay. and that will allow you to then craft weapon stuff. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay, cool. Yeah. So I again, these so, are little things you just stumble into. But um, so this sounds like a chore, okay? But could you think all this crafting? And I'm not a crafting e person, but it's it's fun. It, it is. This yeah. is, this is uh, or, or fun. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, it is. It, it, it's adventuring it's and the unknown unique. and unique. It is absolutely adventuring. Uh, so for it, sure. So it's sort of there's, there's bits of Diablo here, Kim and Phil, in mm -hmm. the in the combat sort of thing, and then yeah. and, and the look of it. So if you think of a Diablo but smaller, there's bits of Steam World Dig in it, which is also sort of ro rogue like as well, in that you're instead of digging, you're you're walking, but you're still going into these caverns that you don't know what's there. Um, so it's got me. And the thing about it is, it's straight to Game Pass. Yeah, which is yeah. always nice. Launched on Game Pass, I believe it's also out on Steam. I could be wrong on that. Yeah, Steam, yeah, I, Steam, and Xbox. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I will say uh, also for those that start to play the game, um, you're gonna do like what I did was I started just pushing buttons to try and figure out what different buttons did because there's no controller guide to tell you what the buttons do. Mm -hmm. um, and so you're just pushing buttons to figure things out. Y is your inventory button. I think B is the y. switch your weapons. Oh, X. X. Is it X? Mm -hmm. uh, either way, that frustrated me because I kept yeah. arming back up my bow and arrow and firing off a stupid arrow by accident. Now, what is the arrows for? And I don't know. I don't I mean, it's my knives with my I don't weapon know. choice. I, got a spear but I only had four. <laughs> yeah. I only had four. I shot them all off. 
<laughs> and you can't recover arrows. So eventually, Ouch. I'm sure you'll be able to re- you'll be able to craft them. But uh, yeah, so uh, yeah, very good, very interesting. So if you've got an Xbox yep. or PC person and you have Game Pass, there you go. It's there for you. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I believe also on the Xbox version, I believe below is Play Anywhere. So I believe you can play this on PC. Mm. So Ooh. excellent. Uh, that, that would be uh, another little kind of bonus. Because uh, I know originally people were like, oh, they're, since it's coming out on Steam, they're going to drop the Play Anywhere but they didn't, from my understanding. So mm-hmm. you'll be able to play. So it's on Windows as well. I mean, the Windows Store. So anyway, uh, all right. So that's that. Uh, anything else, Rob? No, no, that's, that's it. I did three. Funny, I, I quickly downloaded Thomas Was Alone again because I'm trying to remember mm-hmm. where I played it. I, I'm not sure if I played it on. I may have actually played it on on a PS, a P, not a PSP, a Vita. I think I might have played Thomas Alone on a Vita. So. Um, and I, I remember how how wonderful an experience that was. Uh, it wasn't a very long game. Everybody, everybody loves that game. I have no desire to play that game. It's lovely. I don't know. The, 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 the narration is very good and the audio yeah, quality. The, narr- the, narrator, man's, yeah. the man's voice is like Phil's. It's it's very, very listenable. So. Okay. Oh, thank you. Yeah. yeah, well, yeah kind of, uh, Speaking <laughs> of Phil, I suppose maybe we can listen to him talk to us some more. Phil, let's talk about what you've been playing. Well, I'll start by saying I can't believe how good Game Pass is getting. Um, Aside from Red Dead, at the moment, I cannot see any reason to buy any new games. Hellblade, uh, what's it coming out today? Uh, What's it called? Wow. Hellblade Since You Sacrifice. Hellblade Sacrifice. Yeah. Since You Sacrifice. That's out today on Game Pass. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, And you've got Ori in the Blind Forest on the 20th. And at the beginning of the month, two games have come out, one of which could be my game of the year, um, just saying. But the first one is Strange Brigade. All right, before just you go into that, Rafael, complete... just, to, just to, to kind of accentuate what you're talking about, as I'm looking at our playlist of what we've been playing, what we're going to talk about on today's podcast, of all the games that we're talking about, there are only two on the list from all of us that are not on Game Pass. Wow. That yeah. says something to me. So, anyway, continue on, Phil. Strange Brigade. Let's talk about so, Strange Brigade. Strange Brigade. Mm. I've wanted to play this f- ever since I saw it at EGX last, last year. year. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, and it's been a full price game for quite a while, so it's, you know, £50. And I thought, well, I don't know if I want to, want to spend £50 on it. All of a sudden, it's announced that it's going to be on Game Pass. And it could be given some time with the community, it could be the next Left for Dead as oh, far as wow. the community is concerned. I wanted to play this last Wednesday, it but is, it didn't work out. So this Wednesday, yeah, definitely. So as single single player, just on your own, it's it's okay. It's good fun. You know, there's, there's hordes of wow, various things coming to you. It's, wow. it's basically set in... It reminds, yeah, me, it's, of, it's it reminds bas- me of Indiana Jones. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's yeah. four characters... There's four characters you can choose from. Uh, the character you're looking at now is a Yorkshire lass, and that's who I've been playing as, uh, who's an engineer. And um, you basically go around tombs solving puzzles, fighting hordes of zombies and skeletons and giant scorpions. Um, there's various traps you can set off to, to capture them. It feels like it should be played with four players co-op. Um, I think that's how it's been designed. You can play it quite easily single player, um, but I think the community that that sort of co-op vibe is is really what they're going for here. Um, it's great fun. I'm I'm, I'm actually enjoying it uh, very much. So yeah, it reminds me of uh, one of those like Hurricane comics. Remember Hurricane? Annual, yeah, yeah and, and those good old English lads. It's, it's, you know, that, that sort it's, of it's, the, it's a Saturday morning, yeah. yeah, it's a Saturday morning cinema, you know, movies. Rogers, it's your, your Flash Gordons, yeah, 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 Rogers. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, it looks good. Imagine um, I played it at EGX, um, yeah, year before I last. I think um, they had a demo out for this a ways back. I, I seem to recall playing a demo, or maybe it was a beta, I don't know at the time, but um, I remember thinking. I could see this being a lot of fun with a group of people. Um, yeah. I kind of think if you like Gears Four or Gears yeah. Three, that horde mode, the fun we had. I think that's mm-hmm. those same people will love this. 
in yeah. a group like that. And there's puzzles that you there's puzzles that you have to complete as you go along to get into various areas and and things you have to find and special you know traps that you have to um, switch in certain times and certain order. Um, so it's um, graphically it's, it looks it's good. good. I'm yeah. glad. Yeah, it's it's beautiful game and and I'm glad that I didn't pay the money for it because I think without a um, without groups together and that sort of group co-op. I don't think it it's um, it stands up. Uh, there's some good boss yeah. battles, uh, and uh, yeah, you, it's, a, it's a good game. Are there microtransactions by chance in this game? I don't mean that. I haven't seen way. any because I yeah. always thought that the game struck me as a game that could could have been like a, a free to pr- uh, free to play release, kind of similar to uh, there's the game. What is it? Space Lord uh, that's out now. Um, that's gone through some different uh, changes. I forgot what its original name that it, it came out as, but it's like had a big update and it's now called Space Lord. But mm. um, it was also kind of this co-op shooter uh, game, but it's it's all free to play and it's obviously you know hedging on transactions uh, to to make its money. So I always thought Strange Brigade was going to be that game, uh, but it doesn't sound like it is. It just sounds like it's just straight up just co-op. Left for Dead style, you know, Board game. thing, yeah. 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 Okay, so Wednesday, well, night, Wednesday night, 9 o'clock, let's make it a date. So, um, yeah, we can get four people or two groups of four. Let's let's do that. Or 16 groups of four. That's a lot. Minus five. <laughs> That's a lot. <laughs> Minus five. Uh, all right, Phil, let, let us transition to let's arguably one of the gems that has come out uh, into Game Pass as well as uh, into, I think, Steam as well as Windows. Uh, again, uh, Mutant Year Zero. I love this game. I absolutely, I'm completely taken away with it. So it's based on uh, a role-playing game, tabletop role-playing game, um, that doesn't deal so much in... Um, the two characters that you you play as, or your, your initial two characters, which are a boar and a duck, a talking ducks, boar and a talking cute. duck, mutant, a Party mutant and boar and a mutant duck. Uh, yeah, so it's, it's set. It's a yeah. post-apocalyptic world. Um, you come across various artifacts from the past, whether it's an iPod or whether it's a uh, toaster or, or whatever. Various artifacts that no one understands, and you're trying to help. A community called the Ark Survive. It's turn-based. It's got free roam. It's it's lovely. So and it's difficult. So it's really okay, difficult. Okay. So for me, it looks like um, when I first looked at it, I thought, oh, this is XCOM, and then because I didn't really get on with XCOM because that that style of turn-based thing didn't really get me. So there is turn-based in it, but it yes. seems like this isn't like an entry drug to XCOM. Because there's actually free roam bits that you run around before you get into to the uh, the the turn based stuff. Is that that's right? Yeah. Yeah, they, they yeah, actually so, do a brilliant job on the combat. Um, sorry, Phil, I don't mean to talk over you. Oh, go, go ahead. No, so the the way they handle exploration, it is uh, very Diablo like. It's it's isometric. You're wandering around. Um, the game really emphasizes the use of stealth. Uh, you, you try to kind of um, you know keep away from enemies as much as possible and scout out uh, their encampments before you take them on. Um, and and you can also use that to your advantage because you can actually do stealth kills in the game where you'll enter into combat and if you kill them before they're able to alert anybody else, then it doesn't set off all the alarms and, and all hell doesn't break loose and you can kind of continue being sneaky. Um, and and again. You're, you're going through these environments in that isometric Diablo-like uh, control where you're, you're pretty free to walk around. Um, you know, it, it will restrict you. Uh, you know, it's not completely open world or anything to that nature. Um, there, you know, there are entry and exit points to all the different zones. Um, and so uh, once you get into combat, though, whenever you do go into combat, and you'll have options of actually um, you know, hunkering down and, and setting an ambush, or sometimes you might accidentally just walk into combat yourself and, and in a sense, kind of the enemy gets the drop on you. Uh, but once that happens, it goes into turn-based combat. And as soon as the combat is over, 
it exits out of it and you're then back in that kind of free roam uh, Diablo like control. So it feels really slick. And honestly, of all of the turn based games, this, this reminds me a lot of actually Wasteland 2 is very similar to this. If you haven't played Wasteland 2, I would say it's very similar in that you're, you're, walk, you know, you're cruising around. Although in Wasteland 2, you always just kind of had your main character as you went on the kind of map to map. And then when you got into combat, you kind of saw your party. Um, the one thing, my, my, my biggest knock on this game, well, there's, there's really kind of two gripes. Um, and there, one is a minor gripe, uh, and it's a way they can make this game better. And the other is a, a bit of a bigger gripe. Um, right now, unlike XCOM, XCOM is a game where when you lose characters that you've been building up, it, it hurts, it, it, it sucks, but there is a clear path in terms of how you can potentially replace that character or the, the feeling of you can go forward and go yeah. on without that character. In this game, because, you know, at, at the moment, I only have three squad members. Uh, the, the pig, the duck, and uh, this young lady. Um, yeah. Yeah. If one of those die, there's, there's nothing in the game that tells me I can go recruit somebody else. There's nothing in the game to make me feel like I can get my squad whole again. So instead of in XCOM, you kind of play with the, the mechanic and say, okay, I lost a guy that sucks, but I'll try and build somebody back up and I'll push forward. Here, I find myself doing a lot of load saving. Yes. Uh, so, so um, you know, if a character dies, I'm just like, okay, fuck that. I'm going to load the game back up and try again. Mm. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm the same. I haven't actually, you know, I've lost characters. Um, I actually haven't continued to see what happens if I finish that level with right. losing a character, especially if it's been the duck or the pig. Right. And it is such a punishing game that my character is constantly running around at about half health. And to yep. actually get enough, you know, resources. So you you pick up scrap and you pick up gun parts. Scrap you can use to buy things like health packs and grenades and things. Gun parts you can use to um, upgrade your weapons. But they're that that scarce that, you know, I can't afford to pick up enough health packs to bring my characters to full health anymore. Even when you go to the arc. You know, you'd expect if they go to the your base, they, res they get restored to, to full health. They mm. don't. Can you play it on you know, noob, noob level? There is I'm an easy on level. Hard, so. Yeah, ah. I'm, I'm playing it on hard as well. Uh, there is an easier level. I don't know what how that impacts the game. Uh, hopefully it makes it easier. Uh, the stream we're watching uh, here, Greg, is, is on a PC. I see the mouse pointer wasn't around. Does it control right. okay with a controller? Yeah, yep. They yeah, they, they cool. utilize cool. yeah very much the same XCOM like uh, cover system. Uh, if you've played XCOM before on on uh, the console or even on on PC, this is going to feel very fam familiar in the turn based combat section. Um, the the then this will just be the one big negative for me, which is I as I'm playing through the game. One of the things that is brilliant about XCOM, uh, and XCOM 2 in particular, is that they um, randomize those maps. That when you play back through a mission, it won't be exactly the same. Enemies will be different. Placements will be different. Your starting position will be different. In this game, because it's, it's a bit linear in its nature, the map doesn't change and so um, if you're reloading in or, or starting back over, it's, it's all very much set in stone. And so you're going to quickly kind of learn do you and, think, and you, do you think game I'm, the system a little bit. I think I'm right about, you know, this is sort of an entry level thing into this style of game. Do you think it would be good that way for me? To maybe oh, I th I, yeah, I, I think you would enjoy this far more than you did at XCOM because I think the pace of this is, is very different. It's, it's a... I hate to say a faster pace because it's, it's it's actually even when you're exploring it's not terribly fast, um, but uh, it it is a a more adventurous mm. game than XCOM is. XCOM quirky art style. Is, just 
Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. and yeah. and and the, yeah. the 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 back and forth dialogue is really good. Uh, the writing is nice. Um, so I would say yes, take a chance on it, Robin. You, can, yeah. you know, you have nothing to lose. Okay. Um, and and for, a, for a game, that, kind of yeah, for for a game that didn't have a huge, it hasn't had a huge budget. You know, it's not a AAA right. title. It's you know, it's it's one of these games where you'd say, okay, double A max. Um, I don't know how long the game goes on for, but certainly the map that you can see looks relatively big and it is taking quite quite a while to get through the various levels um it has it does have its downfalls um you know it is very punishing i think the, the you can level up the mutations on your character right um and but there isn't really any way to customize your characters apart from finding the various uh, armor that you you come across um right. It's well, not, there, there are there are not, weapons. There are weapons. Yep. Yeah. Um, there's 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 weapons that you can come across that you um, and and actually to Phil's point, so you can't really. Well, you can actually. I take it all back. You can go to the Ark. You can buy new weapons. Um, you can buy attachments for the weapons. Yeah. Uh, so you can modify them in that regard. Um, and you can sell some of your weapons. You can, uh, you know, the artifacts that you're collecting are going to give you basically money to spend on perks. Um, so there is some customization to it. And, and visually the customization actually still happens. Like the armor, uh, you can get different helmets or hats, uh, different chest armor pieces. And that's kind of the extent of the customization. Um, uh, like right now, one of my characters is wearing a top hat. Another one has a little, uh, uh, like a poker player's, uh, a, a dealer's little yeah. billfold. And, uh, not billfold. Uh, visor. Visor, thank visor, you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then I have one of them has a, a, um, a, like a helicopter pilot helmet on. So there's, there's cool stuff to be had, um, but it does feel slightly limited compared to, say, an XCOM, where there was a lot of choices of, of yeah. where, how you customized that all said it's a really good game and especially if you like turn-based shooters um you know and but we're curious this might be a really good as you mentioned robin entry point to try and check it out yeah hmm. Hmm. cool <laughs> uh all right <laughs> barbecue them with fucking whiskey <laughs> <laughs> Uh, all right, uh, let us wrap things up with you, Kim. Uh, I, I saved the best game for last. Uh, Red Dead Redemption 2. Oh, yeah. Come Red on. Dead. Um, there's not a lot to it, I guess. Uh, I'm still plugging along at it. Although, another funny story. Um, I still have a bounty on my head. Um, I still have a dollar to my name. And I went into Strawberry thinking, all right, the bounty hunters are after me. Strawberry is where I shot the place up and where I got wanted. So surely if I go to Strawberry and ter- try to turn myself in, they will let me turn myself in, go to jail, spend three days or whatever. Yeah, no. <laughs> no. no. You're, you're, <laughs> no. you're wanted dead or alive, man. That's that's the last place you should be going. <laughs> I think, but I yeah. went right, believe it or not, I went right into Strawberry and walked into the, the jail. The sheriff looked right at me. He's like, oh, you're here to pick up a bounty. No, I'm here to turn myself in but apparently i can't do that so yes i might as well go make some money of course now i've got bounty hunters on my ass which i'm told considering i i haven't actually run into bounty hunters but i'm told they'll pretty much shoot me right away and that'll be the end of it which okay yeah my question Uh, is though if they shoot me will they take my money because i have like 40 bucks on me now and i really don't want that missing so so when you die you do mm -hmm. lose a chunk like i died last night i lost like 138 bucks i was not happy about that Wow, uh, but but I had you know th- one of the other great things about this game is as you well I shouldn't say great things about the game but as you progress in the game mm-hmm. you're going to start coming across jobs that are going to pay you a lot more money so mm-hmm. suddenly you're going to be flush with cash and so dying or paying off a bounty won't feel nearly as painful but you got to get to that point yeah uh, and really it's chapter three that kind of gets you there. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't know where you're at within the game, if you're just starting Chapter 3 or you're mm-hmm. still in Chapter 2. But... I Well, I just got done rescuing Dickhead from jail, so... Oh, in Strawberry? Mm-hmm. Oh, so you're still in Chapter 2. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm you've still, still got a ways to go. Mm-hmm. Uh, so once you get out of Chapter 2, and it's a long chapter, but once you get out of that, 
you'll start to feel like money isn't as big an issue. Um, I have been enjoying this game, and, and uh, you know, I'll keep mm-hmm. away from spoilers, but uh, there are characters within this game that, over the period of the you know the, the, the course of time in game, you see them transforming in different directions, and it has been actually really fun to watch that transformation because mm-hmm. certain characters you can just start to see changes happening, and you're like, that's that's interesting. Okay, now I see how this, you know, because the other part of it is, you know, we're always, or at least in the, my back of my mind, I'm always kind of tying this back into Red Dead Redemption 1. Mm-hmm. Know how that started. Yeah. I know how that game is. So it's kind of like, well, where does all of this kind of go to get me there? Yeah. Um, and, and so I'm seeing some of that playing out. Uh, and it, it has been really interesting. And I, I hope the story writing and the character voice acting continues as strong as it has been. Uh, uh-huh. Because the, the single player in this game is fantastic. Agreed. My my thing is, I, I'm already seeing with Dutch, I'm a little worried that, because he made the comment the other day, I come back to camp and he's like, I, Arthur, I can already see you're going to set me up or, or something to that extent. And I'm just looking at, or double cross me or, or some shit like that. And I'm like, huh, is Dutch a little, little crazy? Because, um, you know, they just he said it like right out of the blue and I hadn't done anything. And he's like, Arthur, I can see where you're going to set me up. And I'm like, oh, hmm, interesting. I wonder. So, yeah. Other than that, I still hate Mike. I still think he's a, a, a dip. And I've also heard from other people that he continues to screw up. So, that gives me something to look forward to. So, you know. And cost uh, me more people money. People are being quite irresponsible. And I know it has been out for a little while there. And there's no excuse not to go and finish this. But mm-hmm. they're being quite irresponsible with some of their YouTube videos or the naming of them. You know, and the finale of this and stuff. I hope some of the things I'm seeing are not true. Um, so I don't know what you've been seeing. I've, I've stayed some pretty of the clear sub, of Some spoilers. of the subject matter. Yeah. Accidentally, when I was just looking, because I, I, for the last few weeks I've been using the CM Red Dead video on YouTube for us. Right. And I was searching for a new mm-hmm. one tonight and up popped a few things. Oops. About, oops. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah. But I hear I'm avoiding all that because I don't want to spoil. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, more and I will more people say this. There, there are still the occasional bugs. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, again, riding along, um, I, you know, was was kind of hauling ass through town, and of course, completely, uh, like, kind of got close to a guy. I didn't even like run him over or anything, but I just got close to him, and suddenly he was like, "Hey," and and somebody's like, you know, um, you've been, uh, a witness is reporting your crime, and it's like disorderly conduct, and I'm like, what the f? Yep. Disorderly conduct, yep. and so then I'm trying to track down the witness to get to him, and I, I threaten him, uh, but of course I threaten him too late. The cops right there, and suddenly all hell breaks loose, and I'm, you know, basically in this ma- massive gunfight uh, in in this city, and uh, it did not end well for me. Um, the, the police in this game, or the, because for early on it's the sheriff and the posse, but. Mm-hmm. Later in the game, you get into some bigger cities where it's yep. an actual police force, and uh, it makes it way harder uh, because they're every freaking where. It's like trying to outrun them in the city, almost impossible. Uh, and so, um, yeah, still love it though. Still, still really enjoy oh, this yeah. game. Sarah uh, in the chat is saying she was chatting to Kim earlier, and she said she's glad, glad she stopped wandering aimlessly, and she's focusing yeah. on side missions first. And then the main storyline. So, and I remember in, in the first Red Dead, I think that was the same as well. So you played really well, but there was still so much more to come back to after yeah. the, the main storyline was over. So, you know, if you're a completionist and you want to do it all first time round, yeah, do everything. But I think this is the sort of game you could just straight line the story and then enjoy that so much and come back and do lots of the, mm-hmm. the encounters and all that sort of stuff. So. Yeah, I've been I've been uh, mainly doing story missions now, which they, they denote them in the game as yellow, and and side missions are always kind of white. Um, mm. There is one side mission though I've I've elected to pursue whenever I see them popping up, and that has to do with a, a like a quasi love interest for Arthur, and so I won't say any more than that, but because uh, again. Some of these side missions, the content of them is as meaty as some of the main missions, and so yeah. mm-hmm. um, it, it, it 
this particular side mission, I think, really helps me understand Arthur better. Mm-hmm. And I've really enjoyed it. So, uh, yeah, Red Dead Redemption 2. It's a great game. Indeed. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, well, I suppose we're done with what we've been playing because we've covered all the games I've been playing. So let's uh, move on to who said it best. All right, now everybody get settled. Get away from the windows. Now look, good. It's time for the quiz. Uh, yeah, you know what? Oh, too bad. Tough. Ooh. All right. Uh, so this is uh, Nicole's got a little child of a quiz. Uh, so she's put this together. It's Who Said It Best is a game of quotes. Uh, the quotes mainly come from video games, but can come from other game-related sources, including but not limited to movies, graphic novels, fictional stories, and hardcore porn. Um, <laughs> now, I'm going to read off uh, a quote to you guys. I'm going to give you multiple choice questions. And, uh, and of course, then you will give me your answer and we will see who wins. And of course, winning is everything. Uh, right now, <laughs> Kim is in the lead in first place with 22 points. Ooh, uh, I am sadly a distant, distant, distant third, fourth, somewhere in there <laughs> at 11 points. Robin, the cheating man he is, is now at 13 points. Oh, yeah. Mark, who uh, unfortunately is is taking a little time away, is unfortunately also missing out on some quiz time. He is at 17 points. Phil, Phil, this is a moment you can make up a lot of ground today. Yes, you're sitting at five points, just above. Especially uh, since the answers earlier. Yes, absolutely. (laughs) Uh, My goal is in the final two episodes of the year to get you past Kim to take the lead. Uh, you're just ahead of Gary, uh, Mr. DeFelice, Mr. Toothache at four points, and nobody who cares about Rich, but Rich is at two points. Poor Rich. Yeah, poor Rich. He has more cats than he has points. That's scary. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, All right, here we go. Quiz 506. Uh, The contestants, uh, I'm just going to read this out loud now because this has gotten funny. Uh, We have Kim, who likes it on top. Rob, who's not fussy where, and Phil, who doesn't cheat, but will take it anywhere he can get it. <laughs> uh, and apparently Rob already out. Robin, you're already out with B. Uh, you're just starting the game off answering B. So whatever it is, Robin says B. Yep. Here we go. Uh, first question. Or first, uh, sorry, quote. First quote. You are here, and it's beautiful, and escaping isn't it always something bad? Huh? What? Say it again? Huh? Yeah, let me let me let me try and read this again. I, I'm reading this off my phone, so it's it's breaking the sentence up a little bit, so it makes it a little odd. So it says, "You are here, and it's beautiful, and escaping isn't it?" I'm going to try this one more time. You are <laughs> here. Who would think that Greg has problems with know, reading. reading things or saying things to his phone? Mm-hmm. Reading is fundamental. Uh, you are here, and it's beautiful, and escaping isn't always something bad. You are here, and it's beautiful, and escaping isn't always something bad. Was that A? Harvey Weinstein? Lara from Tomb Raider. (laughs) B, Princess Peach from Mario. (laughs) Come on, that was good, Greg. C, Delilah from Firewatch. Or D, Harvey Weinstein. (laughs) Uh, That was actually really good, Robin. What were the answers, please? Uh, All right, A, Lara from Tomb Raider. B, Princess Peach from Mario, or C, Delilah from Firewatch? Okay. I need your answers in three, two, one. Oh. Hold on, my thing is acting funny. So yeah, I was trying to yeah, connect. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Heard That's that before. My thing is acting funny. <laughs> yeah, my thing is acting uncle. funny, yeah. God, come on. This is ridiculous. What's that great game on the stream? <laughs> <laughs> Just tell us, Kim. Oh, there we go. And we're back. Ooh. All right. Come on. Answer, please. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, all right. Oh, all right. Uh, a, B, C. So <laughs> we, have, we have an A, B, and a C. So uh, one person is right for sure. Uh, I can tell you as of right now, it is not Phil. Because <gasps> it was not Lara from Tomb Raider. Oh, no, Phil. Sorry. Hoss. Yeah. yeah. 
And uh, I will say this. If I was a peach, I'd be wrong because it's Delilah from Firewatch. Yes. Oh, 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 for God's sake. God damn it. It's Nicole in Firewatch person. again. I love that game. Yeah, it's the cool. Kim, by the way, uh, my thing is acting up. Uh, that, that <laughs> yeah, is yeah. My Google, my Google search. <laughs> right. yeah, no. yeah, my it Google search that. is acting up. Yeah, um, we are caught. Uh, oh, come on. Caught with your hat All down, right. topless person. Here we go. Uh, quote, quote number two: You can't undo what you've already done, but you can face up to it. You can't undo what you've already done, but you can face up to it. Was it A, Heather Mason from Silent Hill? Mm. B, Frank Coleridge from Silent Hill? Mm. Or C, Harry Mason from Silent Hill? <laughs> I was like, hmm. Harry? Harry? It's like Harry Book. Harry Mason, <laughs> Frank Coleridge, or Heather Mason? So A, Heather Mason. B, Frank Coleridge, or Coleridge, I guess it would be Coleridge, or C, Harry Mason. I need your answers in three, mm. two, one. No I idea. know this is a total mm. guess from everybody. No. Mm. All right. We have two A's and one B. I can safely say that somebody is correct because it was not C. <laughs> well. So that means... Oh. <laughs> That's such a tease. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I'll tell you right now, if I was Cindy. gonna bob for some apples, Bobbin, Robin, yes, got it right. Yes, Frank oh. Coleridge. Yep. Silent Hill. Nice uh, guess, Robin. Uh, yeah, didn't well, even just, move your cursor. No, it didn't. No, it just <laughs> just keep it on B. <laughs> yep. Yep. All cool. right, and. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear! Oh, way right. out, Cindy. This last one. This last one is priceless. Uh-oh. Oh boy! All right, who said it best? It's a me, Mario. Is it A? Oh, I know this one. Mario Aratori from Assassin's Creed Two. B. Mario from Mario Sunshine, or C. Both A and B. So, oh. was it A, Mario Aratori from Assassin's Creed 2? Was it B, Mario from Mario Sunshine? Or did both of them say it with answer C? See, that could be gotcha. tricky, couldn't it? Yeah, it could. Yeah. That's why I, I started laughing when I saw this. I was like, holy crap, this is genius. All right, I need your answers in three, Hold on. two. So, the first one is... Uh, yeah, Assassin's Creed, Second Sunshine, yeah. or both Google of them. Google search, because we can't see Robin, oh, fucker. Okay. That's I know you're Damn it. Damn, why did I think of that? Um, Answers. Three, two, uh, one. Uh, um, hold on. Damn Watch. it. Uh, okay. All right. Whew. We have two C's and an A. Definitely happened in Assassin's Creed. The Sunshine thing. Definitely, yeah. Mm. So, I love Sunshine. There is a correct and incorrect response within our groups here. Oh, really? Yes. Really? Really? Really. <laughs> uh, because it was not only Mario and Mario Sunshine who said it. Oh, so it was no. either only Mario Auditory from Assassin's Creed 2 or it was both of them. Okay. The right answer is... Okay. Only the one. Yes, Mario Artori from Assassin's yes. Creed 2. Yes, huh. that means Mark. Mark, I'm knocking on your door <laughs> with one week to go. <laughs> so Robin gets two points. Oh yeah. Uh, and uh, da, 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 who got the second yeah. one? Kim. 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 Mm. Yep. There you go. Kim got the first one. Sorry, Kim got the first yeah, one. Yeah, the first one. Robin got the next two. I got nothing. Yeah, and, and according to Nicole, Mario doesn't say it in Sunshine, only in Super Mario 64, and is a special unlock. So he does ah. say it, but just not in that game. And I think she's right, because I played Sunshine tricky, before. Tricky, tricky. All right, that is Who Said It Best. Fantastic. Thanks again, Nicole, for putting that together. Let's dive into some news. Get this rolling. 
here is the fucking news. All right, on a week that I thought there was not going to be any news, there was actually quite a bit of stuff that came out. So um, I'm going to roll through this news. Uh, if anybody wants to stop and talk about certain things, let me know. Uh, otherwise, we'll just kind of keep plodding along because we are getting a little long in the tooth. Uh, Konami announced a free-to-play version of their Soccer Sim PES 2019. Uh, Konami announced that it will be releasing PES 2019 Lite, a stripped-down version, uh, basically the free, a free-to-play version of the Soccer Simulator for Xbox One, PC, and PS4. Uh, the focus of the Lite title is My Club, a game mode that allows players to assemble super squads of their favorite footballers, uh, past and present. Uh, the mode includes an optional uh, in-app purchases, which may be how, obviously, well, it's not even how, it's, it's obvious that's how Konami plans to make their money back with the free-to-play version. Um, but in addition to the My Club, uh, it will also include the ability to play offline exhibition matches uh, and play through a skill training exercise, uh, a mode called PES League, uh, which allows players to take part in a three-versus-three co-op matches and participate in a time-limited tournament is also available for the light players. So this is pretty interesting, kind of a bold move. A free-to-play version of, you know, PES. Um, it's a pretty popular soccer game uh, right now uh, in, in the world of sports simulators. Um, FIFA, obviously, is the big one, but I know PES has always been kind of nipping at its heels. Well, am I correct um, to say uh, PES just appeared in Game Pass as well? Yep. Yeah. You are correct. Hmm. You are correct. Yeah. yeah. Okay, football, very good. Football, football, there you go. Uh, hey, if you are thinking you want to buy one of those uh, retro NES and SNES consoles and, and thought, well, I'll just get it when the next, you know, next go round or they'll make more, uh, not so fast. Apparently, uh, according to a chat with Hollywood Reporter, uh, Reggie fils warned that the NES Classic and SNES Classic will sell through the, Ameri uh, sell through, uh, um, the Americas uh, through the holiday, but will be gone once they sell out. So they are not yeah. planning on making any more. Though it is indeed a limited time piece of hardware. Well, I have two SNESs, the mini SNESs, one with the retro pie and one with the standard. I don't have an S. So if anyone wants to swap, uh, if they have an S with a SNES mini, I will quite happily do it. So, um, yeah, right. get in touch with me. I would like a little NES, NES. And I'll swap it for a snizz. Okay. There you go. I got you. At Bongo the scene. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> All right. Next piece of news. Uh, Epic giving developers the Fortnite cross-platform toolkit for free. So basically, starting in 2019, Epic will make its cross-platform SDK, the same tech that allows the Battle Royale action uh, across the PC platform and consoles, as well as mobile, uh, they're basically giving that away for free. Uh, features include the ability to run parties, matchmaking, voice chat, and more across PC, Mac, Xbox One, PlayStation 4, Nintendo Switch, iOS, and Android. Uh, the cross-platform toolkit also works with Epic's own Unreal Engine and rival Unity software. Uh, they said through, and basically this is a quote from the company, through 2019 we'll be launching a large set of cross-platform game services originally built for Fortnite and battle-tested with 200 million players across seven platforms, uh, reads the announcement. These services will be free for all developers and will be open to all engines, all platforms, and all stores. As a developer, you're free to choose mix and match solutions from Epic and others as you wish. Hmm. That's a pretty bold move. Um, Epic clearly is, this is a long play move. I think Epic is trying to ingrain their tech in platforms and games um, and, and this is a smart way of doing it you know hey if you want to make your game cross-platform here's the sdk for it go ahead and use it it's our tech we're going to give it to you for free um it just you know builds that relationship with those developers and then down the road they can introduce new toolkits new new components to this that might be paid for and say well hey you already have the sdk for this now you just need this little add-on it only costs you this much I don't know that that's how they're going to do this, by the way. That's just kind of my my thinking of it. Well, it's for hmm. game of the year, you know, it's deserving. Well, uh, but but this is this is so much more than just the the, the Fortnite, though. That's the, the the big thing. This is you really have to take in the scope of this. They're saying this will work with 
any engine. So it's not just the Unreal Engine. Unity, which is their biggest rival, you can use this with Unity. Make your game cross-platform uh, using this SDK. Um, it, it also kind of is big from the standpoint of, you know, we want cross-platform. A lot of companies talk about wanting to get cross-platform, but they don't really have the tool set to do it. They don't know how to do it. This is Epic basically giving them the keys to that kingdom and saying, here, make your game cross-platform. You want to play, you know, you want to be able to play, uh, you know, Nintendo Switch with Xbox, with PlayStation 4 players? Here's the toolkit to do it. We're not going to charge you anything for it. Uh, you know, obviously there's something to this. There, there's going to be some kind of way for them to eventually recoup, and that's why I think there's going to be some additional kind of long-term aspect to this. But for now, this is a bold move. Uh, uh, you know, and, and Epic is making a bunch of bold moves right now that are all very long-term play. They're not short-term gain. They're about making and, and, and getting developers on their side. Hmm, so, okay. all right. Well, fair enough. Fair play to them. You know, yeah. it's been well supported. My kids still love it. I've been watching a little bit of it, and it is the skill levels are are good with these guys that are getting into the end battles, and it is. But I still won't be playing it. But yeah, it's a generational thing. I think now. So, tough day. Well, speaking of getting developers on your side, uh, Discord. Uh, the the app of the future, as we've been told many and many many times, uh, they of course have announced that they have a you know they they have their store which is direct competition to Steam and now Epic Game Store. Uh, they are now offering up to ninety percent revenue split. Yeah, uh, what is this? Very developers in two thousand nineteen. So um, uh, basically, just kind of reading through this story that came out on Game Informer when games are published on Steam. A developer gets 70% of the revenue, and the others are 30%. Uh, Epic made headlines this past uh, couple weeks, uh, basically two weeks back, saying, you know, beginning of the month, they're offering developers 88% of the revenue of games published on their new Epic Game Store. Well, basically, Discord did a one-up on that and said, hey, starting today, 90% of the revenue from games sold on the platform will go towards the developer. Um Bongo so, stores uh, opening tomorrow morning. Ninety-two percent <laughs> of the revenue goes to you guys. No problem. It's like the hey, I've got a great idea for an exercise video with the ten-minute abs. Oh, I've got an even better idea. Five-minute abs. Yeah, it's it's a bit like that. But not all. I mean, Steam still have such a strong uh, foothold there. Maybe they're going to lose some stuff, but I can't imagine all of these stores getting i mean i'm sure that you, you have to contract to be on one store not on lots of stores you know well, i'm, I'm sure it's releasing first or some exclusivity yeah, stuff that yeah, applies to this yeah, yeah. so but but oh, yes well. so so steam needs quick, steam then. needs a bit of a kick up the ass because it's mm -hmm. not very well, well created it's a bit messy you know to try and go on there and find something new that's decent it's it's difficult it is very nerdy you know it's not very user friendly it is steam we've all got used to it but it's not if there's a new person looking at it it is very complicated so well this definitely is the 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 kick in the butt that uh you know kind of we're hoping steam would get in that you know uh, competition is a good thing and this mm -hmm. this again is bearing out that fruit um because who knows maybe two weeks ago discord was going to give 88 percent of the revenue to developers and then suddenly epic came out with that so they're like oh wait 90 percent um but you know people keep talking about steam and how oh well steam's still huge and then you know i don't think they're going to lose that much share you know again this is a long play move um they're not courting gamers with this move and, and i think that's an important thing you know we really need to just make a, a distinguishing mark here this is not something that's being passed along to gamers. This is something going directly to, to developers saying, hey, all those hard-earned dollars that you're trying to make, we're going to give you more of those dollars by coming to us first. Um, mm -hmm. you know, and that is going to see a shift. Because if a developer says, hey, we can make more money on Epic and eventually still release on Steam down the road, we'll release on Epic first. Mm -hmm. We'll release on Discord first. Uh, we'll take the, the 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 small hit we might get up front to make more money. And what you're going to end up seeing, if that does continue to happen, is gamers are going to shift because gamers are going to go where the games are. 
Yep. And if if Fortnite were to, you know, Fortnite 2 released on Epic Store first, hint, hint, hey, Fortnite 2 on Epic Store first, where do you think people are going to go? They're not going to go to Steam. They're going to go to Epic, you know, Epic mm-hmm. Store. Um, so this is this is pretty interesting stuff, and it, it's it's great to see competition finally hitting the the PC side of things uh, because for the longest time Steam has just stood unopposed, um, and and I've long said I'm not a fan of Steam. I think Valve has been tremendously greedy in the fact that they have taken this 30% cut or really not doing a whole hell of a lot for the services that they offered up. Um, you know, it wasn't up until, you know, kind of more recently that they really created kind of more of a community feel with Steam. For the longest time, it was just a marketplace. It was a storefront. Mm-hmm. And you still had to figure out how you did your own voice chat. You still had to, you know, get external voice chat services. Um, and in a sense, that's still the case. So, uh, yeah, good, good to see this happening. Yeah, good. Uh more goodness. Hey, Robin, uh, Subnautica. Have you ever played Subnautica? I know Phil and I have. I played some tr- yep. tr- trial of it. Yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, again, too many games. But yeah, it's it's free, free, isn't it? Free, 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 free on Epic yep, yep. Mm-hmm. until now, December Phil, you've, 27th. You've, yeah, Phil, you've probably played the most of Subnautica out of all of this. Yeah, I spent uh, spent quite a lot of time on it on the uh, preview version on Xbox, um, and it's just gone to version one point zero uh, earlier this month on xbox so i haven't played it for for a while there have been other things that uh, have been going on but i'd be interested to go back to it and see uh, see if there's been improvements or if, um any of the the glitches the occasional glitches have been ironed out now, it's phil, a good game phil do you know is it free on pc only or is that xbox as well do you know it's from the epic game store so it's um, just for pc just for pc yeah Ooh, yeah, yeah. Charlie's been playing it, so he's having a bit of fun with it. He's taking advantage of this. So. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, I mean, sank, it, sank quite a few hours into it. Haha, ha, boom. Yeah. Oh, nicely played. Uh, <laughs> all right. Uh, a game I know I'm looking forward to. I don't know, Kim, if you're looking forward to Metro Exodus or not. Uh, but the good news is you just might be able to play it a little bit early. <laughs> uh, in, in, in like a week earlier. Uh, apparently, it, we, it was going to be February 22nd. Uh, where every other game in February was launching, and now suddenly it's February 15th, where now apparently every other game is launching. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, Metro Exodus is now February 15th. Yeah, it's not off the hands, uh, is along... it? <laughs> The funniest part about this, everybody like at E3 announced all of their games in February were coming up February 22nd. Uh, it was Crackdown 3, it was Anthem, it was Metro Exodus, it was Dead or Alive 6, it was Far Cry New Dawn. Uh, well, Far Cry New Dawn hadn't been announced yet. Uh, but now, everything except for Anthem is moved to February 15th. Um, so, uh, yeah. Um, I'm, I'm excited for this game. It looks fantastic. Uh, everything I've seen from it still looks really good. I liked the previous Metro games, so... Uh, I'm, I'm cautiously optimistic for this, but um, it, that's a that's going to be a tough month. Indeed, I'll Just still be playing Red Dead too. So yeah, probably, probably. <laughs> uh, and, and the last one, Robin, I believe you posted this story, so I'm going to let you talk about this because I really don't have any. Uh, I love this. This is an Easter egg in Just Cause Four that has been uh, found, and if you're a fan, an '80s fan of Aha and that fantastic mm-hmm. video of Take On Me. Well, there's a certain staircase that you go down. I'm showing it on the stream right now, and it tur- you turn into that cartoony line drawing style mixed with the graphics of the Just Cause game, uh, as a- and the music starts to play, and it's that's, that's kind of cool to me. It's a nice little reference, nice little Easter egg that's there. So uh, check that out. Now, ah, ah, Just Cause Four. Mm. Robin, did you actually transition the screen? Because. Oh, oh, oh. On the stream, shit, shit, all I'm shit, seeing is shit. us talking. Right? Okay. Sorry, sorry, sorry. sorry. I, I was enjoying it. I was enjoying it. Um, <laughs> oh, I don't it think anybody else is seeing there, this. There you go. Okay. So there it is now. There it is now. And there it just goes down the staircase. And you can see the uh, take on me sort of world. And ding, there it goes. And the music starts to play. And away you go. So, uh, yeah. Oh, very that, cool. That's kind of cool. Oh, there it is. It? That's nice. That's some, some yes. uh, late 40s early 50s guys that are in that development team. 
<laughs> I, I like when you get those kind of Easter eggs. Yeah. Uh, nice. All right. Let us shift gears. We are we are definitely long in the two, so let's start trying to wrap this up. Uh, we we know Wednesday uh, we're going to be looking to potentially do some Star uh, Strange Brigade co-op. Is that the plan? Oh, mm-hmm. I'd say uh, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Do we, so do, look up. Do, uh, do we have a speak pipe? I think we might have a speak pipe. Hello, Mark. Right, fellow podcast family. Uh, no, no, I thought we had, but we don't. <laughs> He's oh, gonna Mark. hate us for so sorry. Oh, we love you, Mark. Cool. We love you. We love you. We, we really do. He's I gonna swear. send us all his packages oh, of I'm powdery hit. white substances. <laughs> More hit <meal. laughs> <laughs> Love you, Mark. Uh, uh, anyway, so yes, uh, Wednesday we're gonna uh, get uh, Robin is going to round up people for Strange Brigade for some fun there. So yep. uh, if you are on the Xbox platform, you have Strange Brigade. Go for it. Check it out. Get in touch with him. Uh, if you see Phil, talk Phil into doing it as well. Um, all right. Uh, let's see here. New releases. Kim, this is a massive list. I don't think I've ever seen such a long list of oh, new I know. releases. It's a doozy, isn't it? Don't. Do you need a cup of water? Do you need a you okay? I might need a, yeah, yeah, I might need a drink. Um, yeah, our new releases for this week are uh, Firewatch on the Switch, and that'll be out December 17th. So um, that's our, our new releases. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> which scored me a point in the quiz so yay firewatch so yay. anyway <laughs> uh all right uh let's get out from here well uh, i i should say one last thing on the playdates front uh nicole is desperately looking for more people to join against the world in rise of civilization <laughs> Uh, so find OC Podcast Alliance, join and take on the Russian Empire, the German Empire, the Mongolians, the um, the Filipinos, the Indians. I mean, really, it's Nicole. <laughs> it is. It's Nicole against the world. It really is. Uh, all right. Uh, Victory is achieved. This is a contest that is quickly wrapping up, folks. It ends at the end of this month. End of December. It will be done uh, this is a contest where all we ask is if you beat a game, take a selfie uh, with the game in the background, picture of your face or partial face. doesn't have to be your whole face, just your face, not some other body part. Uh, get that in the background. Send it off to us at OC underscore podcast on Twitter and include the hashtag victory achieved. Uh, and you're going to get entered into a contest to potentially win $20. Uh, $20 in PSN, Xbox Live, or Steam Bucks. Uh, you could even win it in the uh, funny money known as Pound Sterling, uh, 15 Pound Sterling uh, gift cards. You're welcome, Robin and Phil. <laughs> uh, we don't do Nintendo, though. We refuse to do Nintendo, so it must be PSN, Xbox Live, or Steam. Okay, we might do Nintendo. Uh <laughs> Here we go. Updated. Uh, these people have finished these games. Colin All Cars finished God of War. Danok TQ finished Red Dead Redemption 2. The Legit Chinny finished <laughs> Red Dead Redemption 2. <laughs> Love that. Uh, and John Mouse finished Hugh. I don't know Hugh. You all have a victory's <laughs> achieved. Victory's achieved. <laughs> victory's achieved. Thank you very much. Love it. <laughs> I like the mix. <laughs> there you go. Uh, that is what you get for now, but you just might have won $20. Just saying. Uh, all right. We're going to wrap this show up. Uh, look, if you are listening to this right now, uh, feel free to come back. 9 p.m. in the UK, 1 p.m. in the West Coast, 4 p.m. in the East Coast, 6 p.m. on Easter Island, 7 a.m. in Australia, uh, also 3 p.m. Central Time. You're welcome. Thank uh, you. Join us on twitch.tv forward slash OC podcast, mixer.com forward slash OC podcast, and youtube.com forward slash OC podcast. That's where we're at live. If you can't join us live, uh, look, it happens. We know. That's why we put forward an audio only version. Come on to iTunes. You can listen to it, download it to your favorite iPod, your, your phone, listen to it at the gym, listen to it in the bathroom. We don't really care where you listen to it, just listen. Um, or or you could do it like Richard Nutris in the bath while eating pizza. There you go. Mm. Yeah. Sexy time. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Uh, 
either way, listen to it. And, and if you enjoyed what you listened to, by all means, give us a review. We do appreciate those. Uh, if you are looking for people to game with, we have these things called clubs. Apparently, we've got a gazillion of them. But they are great places to meet other people that like to play games. And we kind of corral them all into these things. So on the Xbox, we have the Xbox Podcast Club. On the PlayStation 4, we have the OC Podcast Community. On the group, uh, sorry, on Steam, we have the OC Podcast Group. And on Discord, we have the OC Podcast Server. So really, you have nothing to lose but everything to gain go join a club find us we'll help you find other people and together we will game happily ever after um and with that news i think we should play this you like us we like you see where i'm going with this follow us on twitter at oc underscore podcast check us out on facebook fb.ocpod.com or email us podcast at ocpod.com we'd love to hear from you cool all right kim mm-hmm. final shout outs final shout outs is this like the final countdown um <laughs> final countdown. twitch all users right. shatters let's all, right. all right well for our shatters i have a list so we have banana nanan rcgc skinny seahorse commander root Matt Mon Gaming, Positivity Bot, and Tide. And I'm sure there were some others, but I couldn't see them because I'm going like this to the screen. I think one of them was Black Thunder because they popped up on the chat yeah, on the screen, did, but yeah, they did pop did, up yeah. in the chat box. Yeah. I'll mix so, them. so yes. Um, shout out to you guys, too, even though I can't name you off. Thanks for uh, showing up. Uh, shout out to you guys because it's it's always fun. Um, and I guess, I don't know. I guess that that's it, uh, you know. There's not much else going on. Shout out to Mother Nature for not dropping a shit ton of snow on me yet. So there's that. And, uh, yeah, I guess that's about it. How about you, uh, Phil? Uh, shout out to you guys. Obviously, a shout out to Mark and Journey. Uh, mm-hmm. So thinking of them. Shout out to Mr. Webster as well. Hopefully, I'll have some good news soon. Yep. He's hoping. Oh, and yeah. um, it's almost <laughs> Christmas. Shut up, Greggles. It's almost Christmas. It'll be over in 30 seconds. Just like right. many other things, and it'll be waiting for next year again, just like other things. <laughs> VTU, Greg. Uh, I'm going to pass it over to Robin real fast. Robin? Yeah, that's me. Um, yeah, Mark, <laughs> Mark, I, yeah, you know, unbelievable amount of stress. You have a big, big week this week, and I hope everything goes really, really well with yourself and Jenny. Um, so we mm-hmm. are thinking about you as a large group. Um, yeah, we, we 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 cuddle and 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 cuddle and think about cuddling you, and you're our guy in the middle. It's just so cuddly, and we miss you, Mark. And you're losing the quiz. Anyway, look, we yeah, look, we damn it, we 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 want you to get back here quickly because um, we miss you. We do, and I'm sure you'll come back and play your speak pipe. You can do that. You can do that. Anyway, happy birthday to Charlie. Um, we I'm sure we haven't discussed this, but looks like. We'll have at least. We'll maybe take that Christmas break and do one more show next week. So the Christmassy show next week probably is is it? And then we maybe maybe a break over Christmas New Year. Or one one week. We will allow us one week in a year. So um, yeah, that's it. And thanks for the show. Thanks for listening. Thanks for the, everybody. The shatters. I think everything mm-hmm. has went so far extremely well, and it's been a good fun show. So thanks, Greg. You're gorgeous. Oh no, thank you, Robin. You're a beautiful man. I know. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. Not quite as beautiful as Phil. Phil has been looking dapper all night long. <laughs> uh, oh, thank you, but not not quite as beautiful as Kim. Uh, exactly, thank Kim you. takes thank the cake. You. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> hey, uh, very much appreciate all of three of you. Uh, it was a fun show. Always is. Uh, as Robin noted, uh, in terms of our schedule for this year, uh, we'll take uh, the the show after the Christmas week, leading into New Year's. That'll be our time off. So. Uh, if you're looking for us, then, hey, we, we needed at least one week out of the year. Um, uh, Mark, Jenny, feel better. Uh, Mark did send me a message, Robin. He said, you guys had one thing to do, play my damn voice, my speak pipe, and you couldn't do that again. Uh, he is disowning us. Uh, he told me that he's putting us damn up for it. sale. <sighs> uh, yes, Rich. Good luck. Uh, no, my, four cats oh, is a lot. Family. Oh. 
Stop it. Don't tease us. <laughs> don't tease us. Uh, yes, as I was saying, Rich, four cats is a lot. Maybe just keep it at three. Just saying. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Such no, an uh, asshole. I know. I am. I am. I am. I fully really admit it. Uh, anyway, hey, everybody, thank you again for listening. Uh, we really do appreciate you guys taking part of your day to listen to us go on and on and on. Come back, though, because it's just going to be just as bad as it was this week. Uh, it will never get any better. Uh, thank you again for listening. Have a great week, and we're done. Woo-hoo. Thank you for listening to the Overseas Connection Podcast. See you same time next week.